Hey guys, today we'll be talking about why the Model 3 is the future, and once you drive one, you can't go back. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So a little backstory on why this idea popped in my head. So recently we went on a trip to Portland for a weekend wedding, and so we flew into Portland, and the wedding was actually in Hood River, so I don't if you're familiar with the Pacific Northwest, that's actually like an hour and a half east of Portland. So in that area is kind of secluded, so no Uber or Lyft. So obviously we had to rent a car. So we ended up renting a Camry to go over there and come back, you know, for the weekend. So to start this off, to be clear, the Camry is not a bad car. It definitely gets you from point A to point B. So these are basically going to be all first world problems. But if you're looking for an experience, the Model 3 definitely blows away a lot of the competition. And even on top of that, this particular Camry only had about 700 miles on it for a rental, which is kind of impressive because normally when you get rentals, they already have thousands of miles on them. So it was kind of cool that I was basically driving a brand new car. So the first thing I didn't really like was the throttle response wasn't very good. You kind of had to push the pedal down kind of hard to get it to go anywhere. So obviously if you have a Model 3, you know that that's basically totally opposite that you get really good throttle response from the electric motor and you get the instant torque as well. I'm not a fan of the key ignition angle when trying to take out the key. So basically the angle was pointed so far back that it was really hard to like, your wrist basically didn't want to go that far back to try to get the key out of the ignition. And of course with the Model 3, you don't have to worry about this because you can use your phone as a key, which means no key ignition at all. The key fob was huge. But at least the part that you stick into the ignition did flip in and out, so that kind of saved like half the length of the actual key fob. But another annoyance with this particular unit, with this particular rental company, was that both key fobs were strung together and I couldn't disconnect them, so basically I had to carry around two keys all weekend. You actually have to get the key fob out and push a button to unlock the doors. So I kept forgetting this all weekend and I'd walk up to the door and basically pull on it and it'd be locked and then I'd remember I'd have to get my key out of my pocket to unlock the doors. Another annoyance that happened a bunch of times during this weekend was I'd unlock the door and then I'd have to go back to the passenger like behind me door to get something or whatever so I'd put the key back in my pocket and then I'd get back into the driver's seat and forget that I don't have a phone key so then I'd have to like hassle to reach back into my pocket to get the keys and it's kind of an uncomfortable position when you're already sitting to try and get to your pocket you know if you know what i mean it's it's just annoying to try and do that to get the key out to stick it into the ignition the car felt like a boat so according to edmunds the two cars are basically about the same in most categories just besides the camry is actually about eight inches longer but it just didn't feel like a nimble car it just felt really big and kind of bloated and bulky Looking at the size of the Model 3 from the outside, I thought I'd feel the same way about the Model 3 until I drove it. And then, you know, obviously once I drove it, I don't feel like it's a very big car at all. It doesn't feel that way anyways. And of course we know that it's very nimble in the corners and has pretty good suspension and pretty good handling. The Camry suspension was pretty soft. So if you can see in the pictures, I actually happened to get the SE version, which is their sport version. So obviously if it's a sport version, you'd think it'd be more sporty and kind of would be able to handle better, but it was really soft and kind of sort of weak. So as we all know, the Model 3 handles really well in the corners, so I know it would blow away the Camry in the competition. And shoot, it's beating M3s in the competition, so of course it's going to beat a Camry. There were so many buttons on the steering wheel. Now while I'm not opposed to having buttons on the steering wheel, there's always got to be a limit when just too many is too many. And another thing that makes so many buttons bad is that you have to explicitly remember which icon means what. So that's why I like the Model 3 screen, because first it's intuitive, and second, everything is in English where you can read it, and there could even be a description, so you don't have to remember anything. You just look at it, read it, and you can figure out what it is. I was coming off the freeway, and I had a green light, but then I remembered that I don't have an EV, so I had to brake, wasting gas, and brakes in the process. So obviously, with a Model 3, we have regen braking, which solves both those problems. So you're going to recharge your battery, and you're going to save your brakes at the same time. So that's great for any EV car. And this last one isn't a knock on Toyota, but they had pretty cool seats. They were like half leather, half cloth, just like the standard range Model 3. So I thought I'd share that. So these are the reasons why I can't go back to driving an ICE car. The experience in a Model 3 is just so much better than an ICE car in so many ways. If you had to go back to driving an ICE car, which car do you think would be the closest to your experience to a Model 3? Let me know in the comments. 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.